Hey there, welcome. I'm Shauna with the Astro Psyche, um, and I'm an astrologer, and I wanted to share with you the astrology of 2023. So we'll talk about what's happening and what to expect and how to um, relay this information to your personal life and your personal birth chart, etc. So uh, we're going to be talking about the broader themes um, that are happening that are bigger changes and then moving down into the more fine-tuned um, and things that are more shorter periods of time. So um, it is a bit chronological, but it's also um, more so an order of importance. And the things that I want you to know that are basically a big deal, we're going to be talking about first. And um, this is because that's the way that I do an astrology session. So when I do an astrology session, we look at, um, you know, of course I ask you what's going on with you, but I look at the phase that you're in that maybe is like sometimes like a two to five year phase and what that means, how you're experiencing that over time and then where you are now um, in shorter periods of time. So within the year and the month, et cetera. So we're kind of following that, um, that method. Uh, all right. So the biggest thing that's happening is Pluto is changing signs. So Pluto is moving from Capricorn to Aquarius. And this is a big deal because Pluto, um, it only changes signs about every 15 to 20 years. And, um, we can contrast that with Saturn. So Saturn also moves very slowly, but Saturn stays in a sign about two and a half years or so versus 15 or 20 with Pluto. So big, big deal that Pluto is changing signs. And what this means for you is that Pluto is moving into an entirely different house um, in relation to your birth chart. So uh, this change is happening in March of 2023. Now, Pluto is going to um, retrograde back and forth a little bit. Uh, so it's going to be in Aquarius March through June of 2023. Then it will move back into uh, Capricorn for a little bit. And then it will finally move into Aquarius in November of 2024. Um, but regardless of that, kind of like switching back and forth, the way that um that I notice it is that once we move, once Pluto moves into Aquarius, it's kind of like this initiation, like the new phase begins. Uh, now, what is Pluto about? What does Pluto symbolize? So Pluto is about um, our psychological health, our mental health, our well-being. It's also about um, states of high intensity, um, can even be like crisis situations or anything that involves um, power, life or death, or um, it's also associated with manipulation because manipulation is about power. Um, but Pluto is very psychological. So it's, oh, I know the other thing I was going to say is it's very much about the things that are hidden or taboo or that there is some kind of shame around. So Pluto is very much about shame. And uh, so it can manifest in a variety of different ways based on your personal birth chart and your temperament and your external conditions. Um, but Pluto is really about the things that, uh, that we don't always share with each other. Uh, and that when we do share those things, when we share our shame, or our grief, or a deep psychological pain in a safe space, that there can be radical healing and transformation in that process. So Pluto is very much about transformation. Um, I want to stress the safe holding environment in that process, uh, because Pluto is also associated with, um, with trauma or crisis, or where, um, when we talk about trauma, trauma is when something happens and our experience of it is that it's too much too fast. And, and so then it's harmful, it's hurtful. And uh, Pluto is also a symbol of the healing that can happen after that. Now, um, 
This is gonna look different for everyone, especially people who have um, planets in the early fixed signs. So if you have your sun, moon, mercury, or um, Venus or Mars in early degrees of, uh, of Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, or Aquarius, this is gonna be a big deal for you because it means that Pluto is beginning a an aspect to a planet in your birth chart. And so it may bring up these themes of really focusing on your mental health and your psychological health and um, and any kind of healing work as well. So I don't share that with you to freak you out, but I think that um, one of the gifts of astrology is that when we know what's happening, it puts things into context. So um, if you're feeling, uh, again, especially around spring, um, spring is a big, big transition time. There's a lot that's happening astrologically, and I'll talk more about all the other things that are happening. Um, and in relation to Pluto, if you're feeling kind of like something is off or not right, or there's a big change, it can help to know, oh, that um, this is the symbolism that's connecting. Um, this is what Psyche is trying to say to me. And that I can see sort of the deeper meaning behind things, the deeper meaning and the symbolic correlation of what's happening in my life. And then because I know that, I know what other possibilities there are. And and yeah, it just puts things into that sort of validation and context place. Okay. Uh, the next piece that's happening this year, also in March 2023, is that Saturn is changing signs. So this is a big deal because Saturn is about the structure and limitation of our lives. It's about the foundation of our lives. Saturn um, is also about devotion and commitment and responsibility. So uh, wherever Saturn is transiting in our birth chart, that area of life, that house and those personal planets are going to sort of feel like the the pressure or the weight or the call for responsibility from Saturn. Now, um, sometimes this is appropriate. Um, for example, um, I am completing my master's degree uh, in counseling psychology, and this is a very Saturn thing because Saturn is about uh, showing up consistently over a long period of time. And that uh, Saturn is also about the reward and the confidence and the um, the security that you receive after having been devoted to something for a very long period of time. Now, the trick with Saturn is that um, we want to make sure that it's worth it um, because Saturn is about sacrifice. And so if you're having a Saturn experience, a Saturn transit, maybe you're a Saturn person, um, there's, there's this theme of sacrifice and is it worth it? Is the thing that you're sacrificing, is it a good payoff for the long-term goal or what you're going to receive? Um, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. And sometimes, frankly, life is not very fair and we are forced into situations where we take on a lot of responsibility or um, we have to sacrifice something or we deal with a major loss where um, there is no payoff or it doesn't feel like there's a payoff. And, um, you know, in those cases, I, I would offer that... Um, the more that you know where your choices are and where your power and autonomy is, where you have the ability to make a choice, that that can um, be a remediation for those times, that that can help you and that can, um, you know, maybe not make the process easier all the time, but it can make it more copable, easier to cope with. I feel like I just got really into a Saturn uh, rabbit hole there. So I hope you get a feel for Saturn again, not to freak you out. Um, but I think that it helps us to know 
what the full spectrum of possibility is so that we don't take these things as personally um, or think that we're doing something wrong when we have a challenging experience or we have a challenging astrology aspect. Um, now, uh, Saturn moving into Pisces, this is going to be important for people who have personal planets. So the moon, the sun, uh, Mercury, Venus, Mars. If you have any of those planets in mutable signs, so this is going to be Gemini and Sagittarius, and then Virgo and Pisces. Um, this is going to be an important time for you. And again, it's going to depend on um, your personal birth chart, uh, what planet is being aspected, and then also just your life and your circumstances as well. Um there was one other thing I wanted to say here, and I uh, guess that is that uh, we also want to look at your Saturn placement in your birth chart, uh, because where that is in relation to Saturn and Pisces that's happening this year, that's also going to tell us a little bit about uh, your Saturn story. So Saturn is very related to um, growth and maturity and um, initiation, our journey. Some might say it's related to the hero's journey um, and that Saturn moves in these, uh, these cycles. So there's the big cycle, the Saturn return the entire time, the 28-ish year period that it takes Saturn to move through the entire zodiac. And then we also have these um, critical points, which are um, seven-year phases of Saturn. So this is whenever Saturn um, makes a square to a, to a natal planet or to your natal Saturn. And so this is a big deal, um, again, for people that have their birth Saturn in a mutable sign. So that's just something, again, to pay attention to because that's a big change that's happening in March of 2023. Now, um, something uh, that's also happening that is a little bit more like lighter kind of energy. So um, that was the tough stuff. <laughs> we did that first. Uh, is Jupiter is changing signs. So Jupiter is moving from Aries into Taurus in May of 2023. So another change in spring. Spring is like there's a lot kind of happening. Um, so Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, abundance. It is also associated with spiritual topics, um, spiritual things, religion, um, Jupiter is the planet of um, morality and social justice. It's about inclusivity. And it's about expanding your experience. Uh, so Jupiter loves growth. It loves expanding. It loves including. It loves novelty. And that can mean expanding your financial situation. But it can also be expanding your mind um, with education and learning new things. Um, Jupiter is very, uh, it's very philosophical in nature. So it's about exploring, traveling, and um, Jupiter is another very important planet to know where it's aspecting in relation to your birth chart because um, so in contrast to Saturn, Saturn shows us where our limitations are. Jupiter shows us where we have uh, opportunities, where we have the ability to learn and grow and to, um, to proceed with less resistance. So this change from Aries into Taurus means that Jupiter is going to be in an entirely uh, different place in relation to your birth chart. And Jupiter is in the same sign for about a year or so. So you're going to have the full 2023 of Taurus of um, Jupiter being in Taurus from May forward. 
Okay. So uh, also another change in spring and then again in fall is that we will have eclipses in April and May and then in October. Um, eclipses happen about every six months and they always happen with either a new moon or a full moon. Always. Uh, that's the very nature of eclipses. And so we have um, eclipses that are happening in Aries and Libra and then also Taurus and Scorpio. So this is because um, the north and south node are changing signs. So the north and south node, they always um, are in a retrograde or uh, backwards motion through the zodiac. So unlike the planets, which typically we see, we track them moving forward in the zodiac, sometimes they retrograde. Um, the nodes are totally different. They are always appearing to move backward in the zodiac. Um, so in this case, we're moving um, into Taurus and Scorpio. And so let's see, let me give you the dates of these eclipses so that you can uh, note that. Okay. Oh, and you know what? I misspoke. Um, the nodes are moving from, I have so many notes. Um, the nodes are moving from Taurus Scorpio to Aries Libra. So on April 20th, we have an eclipse in Aries. May 5th, eclipse in Scorpio. October 14th, eclipse in Libra and then October 28th eclipse in Taurus. So that's kind of like this mishmash of um, Aries, Scorpio, Libra, Taurus. Now eclipses are times of transition and change. Uh, we can think of an eclipse as like a portal opening to the other world, to change, to transition. And um, Whereas transits typically feel like there's kind of this bell curve of change um, where there's like this slow progression of things starting to change and then there's like a peak and then there's um, a transition outward. Eclipses are like, bam, like it's happening. And so it can um, often feel unpredictable, uncertain. It can feel like there's a lot that's in transition in a very brief period of time. Um, and yeah, I just want you to know that like those times are where it's good to know that there's things are in flux and to not, don't freak out <laughs> if things feel like they're changing so rapidly, know how to, um, know how to feel grounded and secure, especially in April and May and October. And, uh, know what's really important to you. Know, um, know what your long-term goals are, what your foundational values are, and what you want to create in your life. Okay, uh, so that's the eclipse section. Uh, the other piece, so we're getting smaller and smaller time frames. So the other piece that's happening is Venus is going to retrograde this year. So, um, this happens every couple of years or so. So it's important to note, especially where it's happening in your birth chart. Um, so Venus is going to retrograde in Leo from July 23rd through September 3rd. So it's going to be in the later stages of Leo. Um, so that's a time where there is a reflection on Venusian issues. So Venus is all about um, money and beauty and luxury and attraction relationships, um, sex and sexuality. It's about the things that we're attracted to as well as the things that we're repulsed by. So it's like, what, um, what do we love? What are we drawn towards? What makes us feel something? Um, and then, yeah, like what, what is our, um, 
what are our social needs as well as a very Venus kind of thing. So uh, retrogrades are not inherently bad um, or inherently challenging. Rather, uh, retrogrades are introspective. Retrogrades are reflective. And so this, uh, it doesn't mean, I think sometimes there's a misconception that with retrogrades, um, we shouldn't try anything new or plan anything new. Um, I think that there is some wisdom to that, um, but I want to sort of like reframe and open up the thought process of retrogrades is that retrograde is about you taking time to really look at um, your life and your values and like see like kind of be curious about it and see what works for you if there's something that you've been wanting to explore or um do things differently it's kind of like this period of uh I'm thinking of when I wake up in the morning I will have my tea and I'll journal and it's just kind of an open space for me to think and dream and um to to let anything that that wants to come out, come out. And that that's kind of the retrograde process. Um, we can think of it as this open period for you to reflect on your life. And when this is Venus, this is about relationships, um, beauty, harmony. Venus is also about the arts and aesthetics. Uh, and um, Venus is also about your self-confidence, self-esteem, sense of self, how you value yourself. So those, um, those are all things that may come up in your life. And it can be a great opportunity to um, intentionally set aside some time during those months to reflect and to give yourself some extra um, introspection time. Okay. And then uh, the final piece that that's important this year is I want to give you a little um, forecast into Mercury retrogrades. So we're going to have four different Mercury retrogrades this year, all in earth signs. Uh, another cool tip is that Mercury retrogrades will happen in the same element for a period of time for about a year or so. Um, so we're having all earth signs this year. And then in 2024, Mercury retrogrades will start happening in fire signs. Um, so that's kind of cool because then you know um, what areas are getting affected and that the retrogrades are going to have kind of a different flavor, different tone to them. Um, so uh, we're currently in Mercury retrograde uh, through January 18th. Mercury retrograde is in Capricorn through January 18th, 2023. Uh, then we will have Mercury retrograde in Taurus from April 24th through May 15th. Then again in Virgo from August 23rd through September 15th. And then in uh, again in Capricorn and a bit in Sag from December 13th through January 2nd, 2024. Um, so I think those are good to know just to like throw them on your calendar and know that um, Mercury is about communication, finances, um, merc um, <laughs> marketing. Um, it's like mercantile, you know, marketing, business kind of thing, communication, technology. Those are all Mercury's topics. And so during the retrograde time, it's great to um, revisit or revise any kind of business or financial or communication kind of things, um, contracts, uh, revise, revisit, think about, be more introspective, and then after the retrograde period to move forward with those changes and to allow them to, um, to move forward in the world seamlessly. Uh, now, I'm a big proponent of not stopping your life for astrology. I think that um, the astrology should help us. We shouldn't build our lives around astrology necessarily. Um, sometimes that is possible, but a lot of times it's not. So, um, you know, 
the biggest thing is to know what to expect. And when you know what to expect, then you can plan for it. You can plan extra time cushions for Mercury retrograde periods. Um, you can, if you're planning on starting something new and you're able to do it before, after the retrograde period, then you can do that. But um, I, you know, I just want to say, don't, don't, um, don't hold off on doing something that feels like it needs to happen and it's the right time because you're afraid of the astrology. The astrology is not going to hurt you. It's not here to hurt you. It's here to support you and to help you uh, live your life and express the symbolism in a way that that is most conducive to your life and to, to your own uh, special and unique energy. Okay, so I have a couple of tips for you to, um, to wrap this up and to make the most of this. Um, Number one is to, if you can, uh, at some point in time this year, get an astrology reading. Now, I'm not saying that because I'm an astrologer or that you should get that from me. Um, find an astrologer who you like and you respect and uh, that, that you have a comfort level with and ask them to look at your chart. It doesn't have to be a full session, but if you can at least like get a little bit and ask them about what's going on for you this year, that's going to really help you to know um, what astrology is important versus not so important for you this year. It's basically applying everything that we've just talked about into your life personally. And that is where astrology really helps you because it helps you know, okay, like this is this is where it's going to tap into my life and um, and it helps you plan your life and live your life in a way that uh, that's more specific and unique to you. So that's tip number one is to get an astrology reading if you can from an astrologer that you like and trust and feel safe with. Uh, tip number two is, I know I talked about a lot of stuff here. Um, and if you take away anything from this, know that Saturn and Jupiter are the most important planets to track and to follow because they're the most concrete, real world, external circumstances planets. Saturn is about our limitations in the physical world. Jupiter is about our opportunities and abundance in the physical world as well as our spiritual development. Now that I'm saying that, I think Saturn also contributes to our spiritual development, but in a different way. Um, but these two, Saturn and Jupiter, uh, they really um, tell us where the balance between limitation and opportunity is for you. So if you don't pay attention to anything else, those are really good planets to get familiar with as far as um, the transits and how they relate to your personal birth chart and to your life as well. Okay. Number three, tip number three is to reach out for support. And that can be reaching out to a friend, a family member, um, someone that, uh, that's a professional, whether that is a therapist or a counselor or a coach or, um, someone that you feel safe with uh, can even be a crisis line. Um, I think it's so important to know that uh, that we're hardwired, like Brene Brown says, we're hardwired to connect. We are social creatures. And that if you're having a challenging experience, there's no benefit of you going through it your own on your own, um, that it's going to be easier for you. You're going to... Um, feel better and more connected and more rooted and more supported when you reach out for support um, from your community or from, again, someone that you feel safe with. And so I just want to encourage you to do that no matter when you're watching this during the year that, um, that there are resources out there and that the people that love you uh, and like you, that they, they want to hear from you and know how you're doing. All right. That is your astrology of 2023. I really hope that you liked this and got something out of it. And I look forward to seeing you more this year. Bye for now.